is where I was going to start my uh, message yesterday. I got a chance to read some of it. I was rushed a little bit, and I hate to really rush. But uh, I can ask the question as I was uh, yesterday uh, starting off, who's that at the door? Uh, I asked the question again, and we asked the question, who's that what? You know, I, I've used this before, and uh, I figured where I, was, I was thinking, what would I prepare to speak to the family about? And I know it looks kind of funny holding a door like this, but it just demonstrates my message. I mean, it's nothing behind it. It's just a door frame, and I like this because it reminds me often of the scripture that Jesus is at the door. Amen. Now, how many times have he knocked on your door? Come on, somebody. And, and, and we wanted or didn't want to let him in. Come on, somebody. And some, some of us, it took a longer time to let him in than others. And there's an old, there's a old blues that say, I hear you knocking, but you can't come in. You know, when people knock on your door, Come on, somebody. I'm going to pray in a minute. I just ask you to bow your heads with me. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for your grace. And truly thank you for your mercy. And truly thank you for your loving kindness. And thank you, O oh Lord, for all that you have done. And about ready to receive this word. And that it will be blessed and sanctified in our hearts. Blessed and sanctified in our spirits. And it will give us the strength to go on. To press on. Even in, through adversity. Even advancing through adversity, even overcoming and being conscious of your presence, that your word will find a hiding place, and your anointing, O oh Lord, will shadow every image that's not like you, Lord, and pull down the stronghold, break down the walls of petition, and let us go forward with strength and power as we read and receive the word of God. For this we give thanks for all things in Jesus' name, and all those that love the Lord said amen, 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 amen. and amen. Who's that knocking at the door? Look around and somebody and say, who's that? Who's that? Knocking at the door. You know, I, I'm from a time that I have to be honest with you, when we had neighbors, uh, you know, and, uh, and you know, we had screen doors, and most of the people uh, that lived in the project, we had screen doors, and, and, and very few people actually locked their screen doors. Them the days that you can just go and knock on somebody's screen door and the door was always open or whatever. And, and they oftentimes neighbors, you can tell when things were tight in the month, they come by with an empty cup. Come on, somebody. Y'all got a cup of sugar? And some of the folks said, you all the way over here asking for sugar. Ain't y'all gonna ever get some sugar? Y'all got a cup of flour? You got a cup of milk? And then, and then to take it to a, a, a blues level, you know, any time a man come and knock it on a cup, a woman's door, he had an empty cup. He wanted something. Oh, y'all don't want to hear him. He was up to something. And she would tell him, get away from my door. I hear you knocking, but you can't come in. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all, you know, I, 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 I got to be careful. But I just want you to understand that there was a knock. Even at midnight, there was a knock. And a woman, uh, a man that was uh, in need, uh, and because of that need and the importunity that was pressing the heart of those that was uh, outside needed something from the people that was inside. But in this case, it was Jesus that was oftentimes uh, knocking on your door. And he makes reference to this in the book of Revelation. Now, uh, uh, chapter 3, starting at verse 14, is where we're going to start at. And I didn't quite get to where I wanted to let yesterday. I tried to hit them and run, but I, I was going to broadside them. Come on, somebody. Because we had a lot of heavy hitters in there. We had a, a lot of CEOs at the funeral yesterday. Oh, <laughs> uh, y'all don't know what I'm talking about. CEOs, who are them? Uh, they, they, they're members of churches, but they don't come too often. Uh, we call them CEOs. They come at Christmas time. They, they come at Easter time. And they come at other occasions, like funerals and weddings. And we call them CEOs of the church. They're the big shots. Are you like that, Junior? They're CEOs of the church. They show up when the opportunity arrives, but they really don't want to come because they really don't want to hear what the preacher say. 
especially this preacher, you know what I mean? They, they talk about me when they get a chance. That Reverend Watkins is something else. I already know what y'all feel about me, but that ain't stopping me from what I got to do because I had to knock a long time ago. Lord have mercy. And I'm like anybody else, when I heard a knock, I wasn't sure if I wanted to open the door. Because, you know, open the door for Christ means you got to make a change in your life. Because once he crossed, once he crossed the threshold of your soul, I said once he crossed the threshold of your soul, your life will never be the same. Are y'all with me on this? You know, he can, sometimes we can hold back and we can be laid back. But when Jesus gets to knocking, oh, yeah. come on somebody. And you know, just like when he broke bread, he had a distinction. He had, you know, like most people, they got a certain way about them. They do things and you can recognize who they are and how they do things. And when Jesus broke bread, they recognized how he, how he broke bread and how he drank wine. They recognized. And that's why when they recognized it, and the minute they said, Lord, he disappeared. And I believe that when Jesus knock on the door of your heart or the heart of anybody, you can recognize the knock. Somebody say amen. Lord have mercy. I'm just laying down the groundwork. Cause. So here in verse Chapter 3, verse 14, he speaks to one of the seven churches of Asia Minor. Now, the seven churches are the results of when Israel was scattered after Nebuchadnezzar came down and all the saints scattered throughout all Asia Minor out the world where they were fearful of the Roman Empire. And wherever a church or work could be established, uh, it was uh, established purposely for not only spreading the gospel, because remember this is after Christ. And Christ sent his spirit and his candlestick to these seven churches. They were the stronghold. And you and I got to be a stronghold. You see, I, I, I characterize this ministry as a stronghold because when we first started out, many laughed and poked fun and thought that we weren't going to make it. Oh, you don't have to say amen. Many laugh and poke fun, but many of these preachers and pastors and these people who condemn this ministry are dead and gone. Yeah, that's right. Oh, y'all don't want to hear me. And I'm here to tell you, you got to stay and remain faithful even when you're going through the fire, even when you're going through the trial, even when you're dealing with temptation and traveling. you got to stay faithful, and God will see you through it all. My, my, my. You see, it's one thing to take over a ministry when it's already established, but to start from scratch. Oh, my God. You made apple pies. You made cakes from scratch. And that don't mean you went to the store and bought anything. Everything had to come from what you already had. You see, when you got to work from what you already got, God would add to it. My, my, my. You can look at a cake box and say, I'm going to make a cake. You can have all, all the ingredients in the bowl, but it still ain't a cake because you got to mix it up. Are y'all with me on this? And even after you mix it up and pour it in a pan, it still ain't a cake until you add a little heat to it. And then you wait for it to rise to its occasion. Come on, somebody. God wants us to rise to the occasion to do his bidding. Amen? Chapter 3, verse 14. If you got it, say Amen. <clears throat> And unto the angel of the church of Laodicea. It was a, a modern day church. And he said, write. This is Jesus talking now. He said, write these things, says the amen. See, sometimes we call him Jesus. And sometimes we say amen. amen. Now we'll call him amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. See, these things say the Lord, amen. Now, I told y'all yesterday, I'll tell you again today, you know, if you ain't going to use your amen, look over to somebody and say, can I borrow, can I borrow, <laughs> can I borrow some of your amen? But if you're using them now, ain't nothing wrong with that. But there's some people show up at church, they even forget to say amen. And amen, Christ is referring to himself in this verse as the amen. Ain't that what he's saying? He says, said the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of what? Creation of God. Huh. 
I know thy works. He's talking to the church now. The church of the candlestick of the angel on the church. He says, say to them in verse 15, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor are you hot. I would that thou would be cold or hot. I prefer you to be either cold, there's some cold churches, and then there's some hot churches. Come on, somebody. That's on fire for the Lord. But them lukewarm churches, well, the people are straddling the fence, and they ain't sure if they heard the knock yet. I know thy works, he said. Verse 16 said, So then, because thou art neither lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spit you or vomit you the hour of my mouth. In other words, I'm not even going to taste of you because you're not on fire for me. And if you're playing dead old cold church, and there's some cold churches now, they have a form of godliness. But when the Holy Ghost come in, when the power of God come in, they deny the power. So you can deny me, and you can deny loved ones. You can even deny Christ, but you can't deny the power of God. Yeah, right. Verse 17 says, uh, because thou says, I am rich. And the church of Laodicea was a very lavish and rich church. And they increased with good. They had many things to offer. And have need of nothing. And knows not that thou art wretched. They don't even know they were wretched. And that they were miserable, even though they had good things, they had everything. But they were miserable, and they were poor, and they were blind, and they were naked. My God, how could they have everything? And yet they didn't even know they were that way. Don't even know. Verse 18, a few more verses. I counsel thee, I counsel thee, I advise thee to buy of me. Buy of me, he says, tried gold in the fire. If you know anything about pure gold, before it comes to be pure, you got to get rid of the dross. Any impurities that the ground of the earth that grew into the gold when it's melted and fired in the furnace. The flame is so hot that it burned off the purities, the impurities. And only you wind up with the pure gold. Amen. Many times uh, when we are going through our trial and our tribulation, we're going to be tried by the fire. Yes. But when we come out on the other side, we're going to be as pure as gold. Somebody say amen. amen. I counsel thee to buy me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich. If you want to be rich, don't worry about what you're going through. You're going to get through it. And when you get through it, you're going to be rich. And you're going to be as white as women, that thou mayest be clothed, that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thy eyes. Don't forget to anoint yourself. Thy eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. See, God will let you see things that other people can't see. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. God will allow you to go places and do things that others can marvel at and wonder how you get this and how you got that. Only because you recognize who Jesus is. Only because when Jesus came knocking, you opened the door. Huh. And then in verse 19 and 20, he says, as many as, as, as many as I have loved, ain't nothing wrong with being rebuked or chastened. Ain't nothing wrong with being corrected by the Lord. Amen. Right, amen. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Amen. Now, I said it a couple of weeks ago, and I said it again. You have to embrace 
1 John chapter 1 and verse 9. Amen. You have to embrace it with all your heart. What are you saying, Pastor? The word says in 1 John, 1st chapter, verse 9, it says, if we will confess our sins, if we'll just open up our mouth and confess them and ask God to forgive us, God is faithful, hallelujah, and God is just to forgive us of all of our sins and to cleanse us, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In other words, I said it before, Ajax can only clean the outside. Speak and span can only clean the outside. And for y'all who like Mr. Clean, go ahead on because he can only get the outside clean. But God can cleanse us on the inside. And all we got to do is just ask God for mercy. Ask God and repent and make a change. Lord have mercy. When he says he's faithful and just to forgive. See, man might not forgive you. But God will always forgive you. Forgiveness for you and me is always. But he's got a part, and so do you and I. We have to confess. Ain't that right? And then he says in verse 20, Behold, he says, look at here. I stand at the door. And he do what? Somebody said, Jesus is standing. And he's at the door. And he's knocking. And what you going to do? What you going to do, Zion? You going to let him in or you going to slam the door in his face? What you going to do, y'all? You going to open the door because he need to step across your thresh floor. He said, behold, I stand in the door and I knock. He said, if any man, because you see, in them days, they didn't have doorbells. I said in them days, they didn't have door there, so they knocked at the door. But by knocking at the door, you had to develop a habit of recognizing people's voice. And the only way you can recognize people's voice is that you hear them talk. And Jesus said, my sheep know my voice, and a stranger, they will not follow. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. If Jesus is knocking, he says, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him, literally, figuratively, and spiritually. He said, I will come in to him, and I will sup. I will sit down with him and conversate with him and have fellowship with him and laugh with him and speak with him and talk with him. I will be with him, and he will be with me. In other words, when you open the door, when Jesus knocks, you're going to recognize his voice. You're not going to open the door with people who are carrying erroneous doctrine. There are people that will knock at your door, and they ain't just talking about Jehovah's Witnesses. Oh, y'all don't want to hear Stephen talk, y'all. Y'all still dealing with yesterday. I'm in today. Come on, somebody. Wake up. Somebody said, wake up. You should have got your sleep yesterday. Amen. Amen. Don't you be trying to go to sleep on me. Come on, somebody. Trying to sleep in between the sermon message. I'm here to tell you, if Jesus is knocking on the door, you have to answer the door. But he's got a distinct voice, and he has a distinct knock, and you can recognize the knock, and you can recognize the voice. And when he stop and stand and come across the threshold, he said, I and you can fellowship. With one another. Right. How many want to fellowship with Christ? Yes. He said, I stand at the door and knock. Yes. If any man yes. hear my voice, I will come to him. Yes. You see, I'm reminded that when you think about all the men and women in the Bible, many of them heard the knock. Yes. It was Peter that heard the knock. Amen. Oh, he acted up. And sometimes we wasn't quite sure if he was going to make it, 
But when he answered the door and Christ came into his heart, he had fellowship with him. It was Paul that persecuted the church. But when Christ went and knocked on his door, what door am I talking about? I'm talking about the door to your heart. I'm talking about the door to where your spirit lives and lies. Where Christ can come in and sit with you and fellowship with you and meditate and pray with you and have one accord with you. But you got to recognize his voice. It was Paul that realized that I can't fight against him because he's bigger than me. What a man that came to condemn the church, yet when he heard the knock, Amen. he might not have. You ever answer the door and you just crack the door open and say, who is it? Amen. That's where some of y'all, when Christ knocking on your door, somebody said, who? who? What's my message? Who's that knocking at the door? Y'all hear people knocking at the door. Some people, don't, they, 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 you got a big old doorbell there at your house and they're going to be banging on your door. Now, if they banging on your door, it ain't, it ain't Jesus knocking, it's the popo. <laughs> Are y'all with me on that? Because the police, they don't, they take that billy club, bam, 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 bam. That means urgency, come and open this door. And then, and you say, who is it? It's the police. <laughs> po police? M my daddy was the police. He, he was one of the poorest men there was and the least man thought of. <laughs> he was the po police. Okay, y'all didn't get that. Never mind. mind. Y'all better leave me alone. I told you I might be taking a nap in the middle of this sermon, you know. It's important that you understand that Paul and Peter understood. And even the prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel, when they heard the knock and they heard God's voice, they opened the door and God used them mightily to prophesy to the nation of Israel, to bring them back to a place of repentance and to find sound doctrine. That's what Christ want to bring you when he crossed your threshold of your door. He want to bring sound doctrine. That cannot be refuted. Amen. There are people that will challenge you and what you stand for. You got to know what you stand for. You got to know that Christ has knocked on your door and you're allowing him to come in to sit with you. And anybody else come in and try to alter that, you tell them you're not welcome here. Amen. I'm just trying to make it in everyday language because many of you will be challenged by your faith in Christ. You got to know Christ for yourself. Right. Look around and somebody say, you got to know, got to know Christ, for yourself. Christ for yourself. Oh my God. Even if you got a headache, you got to know him for yourself. Right. You may think, well, pastor, look like he don't go through them. I've been through a lot. I might not talk about it, but I'm made out of the same joke you made out of. Yeah. I put on a white shirt. I got a ring around the collar. I get in the tub, I got a ring around the tub. I'm made out of the same junk. But I'm going to tell you, if you hold on to your faith, right. hold on to your faith and don't change. Remember who is coming to your house. Now, I know some of y'all, if Jesus were to come and knock at your door right now, some of y'all be telling, Jesus, is that you? Hold up one minute. I got to get stuff straightened out. You got to fix everything up. I'm saying have it already fixed. Amen. Always be ready because you don't know when he's going to come knocking on your door. You don't know when he's going to show up. Amen. Well, you got many. You got Elijah and Elosh. When I think about Elosh, I can't help but think about Naaman. Uh, when I think about Naaman, I think about he was a captain of the, the host of Syria. Are y'all with me on this? The Bible said he was a great warrior. He was a man of valor. He was esteemed among the people, and he was well respected. Every war he won, God helped him win that war. I don't know about you, but every fight I'm in, come on, somebody. I want to win the fight, especially when they come to dinner with the officer. Why? Because I ain't got to worry about Jesus being on the outside because I didn't open the door and told him to come on in. 
How many relatives you got that will come a great distance and they knock on your door and you tell them you can't come in. You tell them come on in here. That's the attitude you got to have with Christ. If he's knocking on your door, come on in, Jesus. Pull your food. Come on, pull your shoes off. You want something to eat? Let's sit and talk a while. How do you do that? You do just like Mary did. You come and sit at the feet of Jesus. You zero in on what he got to say. Because he come with a message of hope and of salvation. Somebody said, I heard him knocking. I'm going to open the door. Ah. When Elias was in his home down at his address, he was minding his own business. Word got around that this Naaman was a great man of valor who had won many battles. And God gave him victory. But he had a defect in his character. Everybody said defect. Defect. And even though he was a man that did great things, the defect was in his flesh because he was covered in leprosy. And leprosy comes in all shapes and forms and sizes. Not just that you turn white as snow. There can be leprosy. Most people don't know you can have leprosy in your own home. When most people don't know that mold that grows in your house is a form of leprosy. Okay. You don't believe me, go look at the book of Leviticus and you'll see what leprosy is and what mold is. And therefore, if you build a house or anything, the priest had to come and look at the, the mold that was in your house. And if he saw in a certain way, he would say it unclean. When you see all kind of black spots and things in the wall and in the wood, it's a form of leprosy. And you can pick up a rare and contagious disease that can make you or your family sick. We're living in the last and evil day. How have you ever heard that in China there is 1.2 billion people and 11 million people are quarantined? I ain't never heard of that. Amen. What kind of disease that you got to quarantine the whole city? Amen. That means all those that stay in Rockbury, Dorchester, and Mattapan, don't you come over to Milton and don't come down to Brockton. <laughs> come on, somebody. Because what they're saying, don't bring that mess over to USA. Right. Oh, y'all ain't with me. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying Eli's recognized that, 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 that there was a maiden that told her, her uh, the, the woman, her mistress, uh, there's a God in Israel that can heal my master of his leprosy. Now, there was a childlike faith. Now, you know as well as I know, when somebody knock on your door, you don't send a child to answer the door. Because it's going to take a man or woman mindset or mentality to confront who's at the door. Am I talking right? Come on, somebody. Because if a person hear a child, they're thinking, especially in today's, day, today's society, with all the pedophiles and people are abducting people even as they're walking on the street. You got to keep an eye on your children and keep mindful of what's happening around you. You can't, I'm sorry, I got to put it out there. That's right. You can't even trust the coyotes. Because right. up, up there in the wood, the coyote said, uh, the daddy was walking through the wood with a little two-year-old, and the coyote said, he ain't paying attention. This looks like a good meal to me. And, and, and the new people said that Coyote grabbed the two-year-old and went to drag it in the wood. And the daddy went in and went in the, went in the David mode and jumped and went in Goliath mode and jumped on the Coyote. Yeah. Uh, did y'all see that in the news? Yeah. yeah. And he said he liked to kill and suffocate that Coyote. Why? Because he came to his children, his child defense. Don't you realize when the devil attack you, God will come to your defense? That yes, God will show up and show out? Yes, You'll go all your way if you knew your child was in danger. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. That's, why, that's why in the animal kingdom, 
The female lion will do all the hunting and the catching, but when there's trouble on the horizon, the king of the beast show up and show his mane off. Uh -huh. What's up with this? Y'all want some of this? Amen. Amen. Never mind, y'all missed that one. That, that, I watched too many animal programs, y'all. Because he don't just fight unless he has to. Come on, somebody. Eli's realized, well, when this maiden told him the, 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 the king of Syria sent letter and money, silver and gold, and a change of garment, and he sent the men of Naaman down to the king of Israel's house and, 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 and said, I'm going to give you these great riches, but you got to pray for me that uh, I will be delivered. And the king of Israel, you see, sometimes people think every time somebody comes to see you or contact you, they always want to start something. That's a pretty day out there, ain't it? Amen. Sun is shining, clouds are out, amen. and I can't hear not one amen. amen. Am I talking right? Yeah. Understand where I'm coming from now. His name went down and expected to be healed and delivered from this disease because he was a man of valor and he was well known. But he had one complexity, and that complexity was leprosy. He thought he was going to get healed. And then word got down to the king, to the king and the king thought he was uh, starting trouble. Mm -hmm. See, sometimes we got to think through the process Amen. before we open our mouth. Amen. Sometimes we got to recognize the voice that's knocking at the door before we open the door. Because there are some people that will come and tell you, I'm running for state representative. My name is uh, Donald Trump. Will you vote? Get away from my door. I'm sorry. You might not say that. Some of y'all might just, come on in, Donald. What, what you got? Don't y'all get mad with me. It's important that you understand the reality of everyday life. That this man went down and expected to get healed, and when he realized that he had faced the opposition and, and the king of Israel uh, at the time didn't uh, understand why this man came down, where well, it got down to the prophet Elosh. And the Bible said that Elosh sent a message up to this man, the king of Israel, and told him to come down and see him. And you need to study this message real clear because sometimes you can miss the narrative of the story. The man went down with horses. He went down with an entourage. And he went down and he had his servant to go and knock on the door. And Gehazi, the servant of Eli, answered the door. Come on, somebody. You got to be careful when you answer the door. Come on, somebody. Because anything can happen when somebody cross your threshold. Yeah. Are y'all with me? Yeah. You see, even the police in their, in their bylaws and in their training, they cannot step across the threshold of your door unless they have a search warrant. That's why they say, can I talk to you for a minute? Can you step out here? Because the minute you step out on the porch, they're in charge. Right. And guess what? They can bust you in the head and bring by the white in the meat in your head. Yeah. Am I talking right, Jimmy? Yeah. If you want to act up, y'all don't even know it. Your pastor, Minister West, let me just say this. My, my, your pastor got pulled over last week. I was driving in the Brigham Circle, minding my own business. Went through the light, waved the light chain, didn't break no law, made the right turn, and then day I know the light started flashing. I pulled over, he pulled behind me and pulled out. Bam, bam. Come up beside me, say, uh, uh, who caused this? I said, it's mine. First, I went open the window down. The white one on this side, the black one on this side, and a little short black one, he got his gun out, Mr. West, Green, Mr. West, he's looking. He said, we got a call that this car been stolen. What? And I did just like y'all did, said, do what? <laughs> and then I could hear the dispatcher talking to him. And then he had a nerd ask me, uh, you got your license and the driver? I said, what did you pull me over for? Amen. Right? Amen. 
Because I know I ain't broke no law. I know my lights went out in my tailgate. All my lights are working. So I didn't understand why he pulled me in and said, just give me your lights and registration. And I know he's agitating him. Then I heard the dispatcher say, that's not, that's not 823, 827, that's 327. Oh. And then he's talking about, oh, I'm sorry, mister, my bag, wrong plate, wrong number. What? I said, hold up. Right. Come on, somebody. Amen. I'm about ready to get shot in Roxbury, right. and he gonna tell me my bad? Uh -huh. Come on, somebody. No. The difference of an eight and a three, if you cut an eight in half, right. and then he try to tell me, oh, you had something come to you, I say, ain't nothing coming to my plate. That's right, amen. See, I said, now you put me in a position, you could have did some harm to me. Right. Yeah. I'm sorry, sir. Right. I said, just be careful. Hey, every day you get a police instruction. Come be careful when you pull somebody over. Shoot first and ask questions later. Lord have mercy. So I said, I'll lighten up the conversation. I said, since you pulled me over and I'm on my way to down condone that, won't you buy me a coffee? I know it sounds strange, but you see, you can turn a bad situation into something good. It's all depending on your frame of mind. Your attitude can change situation. And this man, this man knew he needed a cleansing. And then when word got back to this, to this captain of the whole to come down to uh, Eli's house, he pulled up with his entourage. They're still in the gold and the garment changer. And then the gays answered the door. And then he expected Eli's to come out. Gehazi answered the door. Uh -huh. Elosh wouldn't come out. Amen. He told Gehazi to tell him, go dip in the Jordan River seven times. Come on, somebody. Amen. That was his instruction. And the, the captain of the host of Assyria, uh, uh, Naaman, got so upset. The Bible said he became wrong and angry and upset. Because he thought the man of God was going to come out, spread his hand, expect something to come out of heaven, and he'd be here instantly. And all the man of God told him to do, go jump in the river. Amen. Ain't that what he told him? And he, the Bible said he was so angry, he took his horse. Spin him around and went to ride away. He was so angry and one of his servants. Thank God for those who got an understanding of God's word. Those that who answer the door and understand what Christ is trying to do. Somebody say amen. And the Bible says his soul servant, name his servant, said, wait a minute. Master, if he'd have told you to do some heroic thing, you wouldn't have hesitated to do it. He said, but all he asked you to do is go down in the water. Amen. Many times when you're going through life, trials and tribulation, and you want God to cleanse your mind, just go down in the Word of God. Amen. Go right down into the Word and get washed over and over and over again. This leprosy made him look like an albino. You've seen people with pigment, they're so white. They're whiter than the whitest white man. Don't y'all get mad with me. I grew up in North Carolina at the School of the Blind. There was more albinos at that school, and I couldn't figure out what was wrong with them. Never thought once that that was leprosy. Never thought once it was a skin condition. Even Michael Jackson got leprosy. Don't y'all get mad with me. Huh? I got a first cousin. She started turning. Her skin pigment started turning white and bright. And you look at her and you almost don't want to hug her because you're scared what's on her might jump on you. I know y'all listening. Amen. But y'all better wake up. Amen. Somebody say, wake up. Wake up. It's important that, that this man told him to go back and dip in the and, and dip in the Jordan River seven times. And he said, there are two better rivers in Damascus. Better than the Jordan. But now understand something today. Even though there may be two rivers that look better and may flurry than the Jordan, but Jordan River is God's river. Right. You got to remember, when you answer the door, make sure you dip down in the word of God and not some erroneous hey. doctrine. Hey. 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 
where it says he went down once, twice, three times, four times, five. Every time he dipped, he got cleaner and cleaner. Amen. Every time you dip and read the word, yes. you get cleaner yes. and cleaner. Amen. Every time you step out by faith yes. in the word and read it, yes and apply it, you get cleaner and cleaner. You might not see it on the outside, but God is working on the inside. If you'll give him a chance, he'll cleanse you and he'll make you as pure as snow. Somebody say amen. Don't worry about what others may think about you because regardless of what you do, they're going to think about you anyhow. But as long as you're walking and you answer the door and Christ is on the other side, Come on, somebody, and invite him on in. Amen. Say, Lord, just come on in. Come on. Amen. Huh. Amen. After seven times, the Bible said this man's skin was like a little child's. Amen. The smell, there's nothing like the smell of a newborn, a, a, a newborn baby's skin and smell. Y'all smell it before. Don't act like y'all ain't looking at a child. They they so pretty and so precious. You just you just want to bite them and just just suck on their skin because it's so tender and sweet. Are y'all with me on this? And he came back, a man of valor. I mean, cleansed of all his leprosy, looking good. Come on, somebody, because he went in the right river. You know you're on the right train because you're on the right track. You know when you follow through on God's word, he's going to see you through the end. But you got to do what God tells you to do. And if you do it God's way, it's going to turn out all right. Maybe somebody say it's going to be all right. Maybe somebody will say it's going to be all right. Mm. Somebody say amen. Amen. So now, you would think that would have been the end of the story. He came back and tried to pay the man of God off. Mm -hmm. He tried to give him silver and gold and garment, and he said, no, I don't need that. Go ahead on. Mm -hmm. Go on back down to, uh, to, down to Syria and, and, and go on back to worship Raymond, the thunder god. Y'all yeah. didn't know that? Raymond was his, R Ramon, Raymond. He was the thunder god of Syria. They worshiped the boat of lightning. Look at that. And you know, anybody in their right mind, I ain't trying to see no lightning. I came at a time where old folks used to tell you, shut up and sit down and get in the corner. Turn off the lights, turn off the TV, turn off the phone, get away from the electricity. If you go sit in a closet, shut your mouth, because God is doing his work. Today, people walk out, yeah, it's like me. Hit me with some lightning. They're all on their phone, they're all out there playing golf. Come on, somebody. They had that swing in the golf club, four! And God said, yeah, four. That's right. You got people that ain't scared of God. <laughs> and it's amazing to me that some people, they more scared of thunder than they are lightning. Yeah. And the thunder just the noise that come after the lightning. Yeah, that's right. You don't believe the next time there's thunder and lightning, the minute you see the lightning, you can count one, two, three, and you hear the thunder. That's right. Just say one, two, three, and you hear the thunder behind it. Because light is faster than noise. That's why when a plane breaks the sound barrier, you can see the plane way over here, but you can see the noise back here. Are y'all with me on this? It's important that we understand that when the man tried to convince the king, the, the, the prophet, to take the substance, he refused. But one thing that, that Naaman said, and some of y'all probably read it and try to understand, why did he want to do that? He asked the prophet, can I pack up some of the earth and put it in sacks on my donkey and take it back to Syria? So when I go down to the house of Ramah, I can pull the dirt down on the ground and I can kneel down on holy soil and give your God the praise? Are y'all with me on this? You say, what did that mean? You see, he realized the God of Israel.
Israel that dwell in Jerusalem and the land was holy even to this day. That's why everybody wants Israel because it's considered the holiest place on earth. Amen. Let me give you some backdrop before I talk about Gehazi. You see, when God called Abraham, God told Abraham, dad, who lived way on the other side of the Euphrates, to go into the land of Canaan. And when he went and left, he only went halfway. But when God called Abraham, and Abraham crossed the Euphrates River, the word crossing over, it means in Hebrew, the word Hebrew crossing over. So when Abraham crossed the Euphrates, he came not only be anointed by God, because he answered the call, God uh, allowed him to be the father of the Hebrews, because he crossed over the Euphrates River. When he crossed over, he had Isaac, and Isaac had Jacob, and Jacob had 12 sons, and when Jacob wrestled with the angel, his name would change from Jacob to, to Israel, and that's how he come to be the 12 tribes of Israel. Amen. 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 So it went from Abraham to the Hebrews, from the Hebrews to the Israelites, and when David took over Jerusalem, the Jews or the Israelites moved in Jerusalem, made the nation Israel, and made Jerusalem its capital. Amen. And the Jews live in Jerusalem to this day. Why? Because God promised them. Amen. Amen. Well, you might not want to hear a little history. Because you say, well, why did they call them Hebrews? Because they crossed over Amen. the Euphrates River to a place that God had appointed just for them. See, God said, I'll give you the desires of your heart. Oh, yeah. If God said, I'm going to give you the land, I'm going to give you the land. Oh, yeah. You see, this man, this prophet, didn't need anything, so he told him to go on. Well, you say, why he take all that dirt to throw it on the ground back in, in, in Syria if he was going in the house of Raymond to worship Raymond? Now, you've seen Raymond, and you might not even pay no attention to him. You ever seen the guy on a boat of lightning? They call him the Silver Man in the Avengers. Silver okay, now you're talking my language. See, don't act like y'all don't know. See, you don't realize that all that advertisement about all these different Avengers, they go back with, with philosopher and Greek names. Greek mythology. And you don't realize they indoctrinated our children under the carpet, and you don't even realize that they slipped something in, and they learned about something, and then you ask them a Bible question, but they can tell you all about Avengers. Amen. They can tell you all about Thor. They can tell you all about Spider-Man. They can tell you about Superman, Batman. The Green Hornet, Snoop Doggy Dog. <laughs> Think about where I'm going with this. You see, you don't realize, but there are all kind of people knocking at the door of your children's heart, and they don't realize they're opening the door for them. Right. Yeah. Is it making sense what I'm talking about now? Y'all yeah. think I just got a old piece of wood and a... It's a symbolism of what I'm saying. Once that person on the other side of the door, regardless of what they're involved in, knock on your door and you open the door and they cross your threshold, you invite that curse into your house. Amen. You see how a curse can come right in your house? You can have a dragon from China on your wall and the dragon represents the Antichrist or Satan and you got Satan hanging right on the wall. You already got a curse looking at you every day. Amen. See, y'all y'all might not want to hear that because your pastor, you know, I try to go in every direction, but I come right back to my point. Amen. And Gehazi was greedy for gain. He wanted that silver. He wanted that gold. He wanted that garment. And even when Raymond, when, when this man, uh, uh, Naaman left with his servant, got up on top of the hill, and, and, and Gehazi just couldn't take it anymore. He wanted to know. How can I get some of that silver and gold? And he went up and lied 
to the man of God. He went up to Naaman and told him a lie. That two sons from the school of prophet came and we don't have nothing to set before him and no change of garment. And I need something because uh, Naaman asked him, is all is well? He said, all is well. What are you saying, Pastor? He took all that dirt and all that sand. And some people don't understand there's, there's a teaching about the earth. Let me, let me, let me just, can I talk to y'all? Can I, can I fill you in on something? Yeah. Huh? See, when I go to North Carolina, or you go anywhere, you usually get something to bring back as a souvenir. Right. Are y'all with me? Yeah. And ain't nothing for me to bring pecans back, scuffalons, or watermelon, or something like that. But some people like dirt and earth. Mm -hmm. And when you scoop up the red clay hills of Cacalana, uh -huh. come on somebody, the red clay, clay hills. I remember women that were pregnant used to eat red clay. They used to eat cornstarch. Yeah. Come on, somebody. And you can tell when they were pregnant because all their mouth was white from eating corn. That's right. yeah. Okay, never mind, never mind, yeah. Amen. Okay, that went a little bit too deep. Sure. Understand something. Let me tell you something funny. I'm going to get right back to the word. There was a man that lived in America, and he was a citizen of America, and he was a citizen of Mexico. And every day he used to cross the border with a wheelbarrow. And the border patrols on both sides saw him going back and forth, back and forth with this wheelbarrow. And they, each side was checking all the sand that he was coming back and forth. And they kept accusing him, we know you're stealing something, but we ain't found out what you're stealing yet. And every day they would check, week after week after month, after month we know you're stealing something. And he went back and forth, back and forth. And they kept trying to figure out, so one of them asked him, saying, what is it you're going back and forth for? And they thought he was stealing something, and all he was doing is taking sand back and forth. He was stealing dirt. And you might not think dirt is mean nothing, but they got a company right here in Massachusetts that when the oil has soaked six feet down, they got to dig the earth up, take it to this machine, clean the dirt, and bring it back. And there's big money into that. To you, you don't think nothing of it. You just look at it, you know, what's the big deal? The significance of the earth, the real estate that's involved. Now, getting back to Gehazi, he ran up to the man, told him I need some garment, ran back, and this is where we discern the spirit. That's how you can pick up when things ain't right. Because when Gehazi answered the door, he had an arterial motive. Be careful of what you're thinking about. Be careful of what you're acting on, because the enemy will trip you up. Gehazi had in mind, had this man, he had this, all this offering, and once he got clean, you can't put a price on what God can do. Amen. You can't put a price on what God is about to do. If God do something for you, or you do something for the glory of God, God got a way of rewarding you. Right. Praise God, this is Pastor Watkins from Community Revival and Outreach Ministries. I trust that you enjoyed that wonderful service we just uh, had, and I trust the Lord that it touched your heart and your spirit, and it also inspired your soul. But beyond just listening to a message, we also ask you to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And how you do that, you just simply ask and bow before Christ. And if you're willing to lay hands upon your TV or bow your heads right where you are or sitting, if you just bow your head with me and we'll pray the prayer of faith. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for all things in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that you forgive us of all our sins and have mercy upon our soul, and that not only you save us, O Lord, from our sins, but, O Lord, that you would sanctify our hearts and sanctify our souls, as well as, O Lord, baptize us with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. We accept you, O Lord, into our hearts and our life. We confess our sins, and we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that God raised him from the dead. And by believing and accepting this, O Lord, we claim to be saved in his holy name. We give thanks and praise for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I trust the Lord that your heart is fixed with the Lord and that your blessing will be assured and that you'll come out and fellowship with us. And if not with us, your, your own local church in your area. And that God will be a blessing to you until we see you again. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.